It is time. Break out the winter gear. Yay! Uh, glad I brought this along. I, mean, I had it in my truck for about a month already anyways, just cause you know, <laughs> I live in Manitoba. This isn't surprising at all. But some good news is that the snow has slowed down just now, I just realized. Nice. Check this out. You can actually see the lake now. We gotta go way down there, way right down there, around the corner, down there, an hour and a half. It's 32 kilometers or like 20 miles, but apparently it's gonna take an hour and a half according to Google. How slow do these boats move? <laughs> oh well, whatever uh, it takes. That's uh, the only way to get to York Factory First Nation. Which I'm just surprised that there's still communities in Canada that don't have all-weather paved roads leading to them. I understand there's only 443 people living there, according to uh, Wikipedia. There's not a lot of people living there. But it's a Manitoba community that's living there. Why isn't there at least a road going there? And this isn't the only place. There's dozens and dozens of these northern communities that are flying. The only way you can get there is by plane. Strange, right? Like, I understand if you're on the other side of a lake, you need to take a boat there. They're not going to build a big, like, multi quadrillion dollar bridge to get to 443 people. I, I understand they, they wouldn't do that for any community, I guess. But no roads at all. It's not that it's on an island, it's not. You can easily build a road around the lake. It's just that there's not a road around the lake. So they decided just to go over the lake with a boat instead of building a road around it. You go further up north, like to Nunavut. I can't even drive to Nunavut. One of our, like it's our biggest territory in Canada. I can't drive there. There's no roads leading there. Yet there's like 50,000 people living up there. Strange, right? Strange. Remember when I was telling you about these heated mirrors? I get to test them today for the first time. I had them installed uh, about a month ago or so. That was the first time I've actually had uh, ice built up on there. So I turn on the heated mirrors, which is this button right here. When it's on, the green light is shining. And you can tell already that it's melting. Awesome, so that's good. All four of my mirrors are heated. And I got them to go through it and make sure that they were working properly before winter, because I didn't want to have to deal with that. Once I'm going down the highway and my mirror gets full of ice and uh, of sometimes it gets fogged up and you can't see what good's a mirror if you can't use it to see right then you're driving blind you don't know who's beside you you don't know what's behind you all you can see pretty much is just straight forward so you can't change lanes you can't back up you're sort of stuck I mean, unless you want to do the ace ventura and hang your head out the window i wouldn't recommend it but hey to each their own i guess but yeah it's nicely melting off that was actually pretty quick Right on. The convex mirror at the bottom there is taking a little bit longer to heat. I wonder if that one's not heating. Hmm. Might have to get that fixed up if it's not heating. It might take a little longer to warm up. The top one's already all clear. This bottom one, though, might be might need to be replaced. It's an old one. Maybe the heating element in it is uh, not working as well. Ah, well, we'll see. We'll see. At least I got that big mirror that's uh, heated. That's good. I see the ferry. Oh, it looks like some rough waters. I don't know if the camera's picking it up yet. It's right there. It's on the way. Apparently they're expecting me. I called the York Factory First Nation. That's the uh, reserve that this ferry services back and forth. And they uh, 
the head officer has told the ferry that I'm gonna be on the boat. So they'll probably load me up first. Now we have this uh, one van here that's beside me. So it looks like it'll just be me in that van. And I don't think there's much room for many others. So good thing there's not a big lineup here. I think I was saying earlier, according to Wikipedia, York Factory First Nation has a population of 443 people. So it's not very populated. It's, it's a pretty remote community. When you think of the, the words remote community, communities like York Factory would come to mind to me. I live in southern Manitoba. Uh, this is this is something very different for me. Kind of exciting though. I'm glad that the snow cleared up so that we can actually enjoy our trip across the water, right? But I can see the boat over there struggling in some waves. Yikes. I wonder if I stay in my truck or if I have to go in a cab somewhere. I don't know what the rules are. We'll find out when they get here, I guess. Stay in here? Hey. Do I stay in my truck? Uh what does that mean? Okay, let me start moving. Okay. Sailor Josh coming at you. <laughs> I think this is the smallest ferry I may have been on in my life with a big truck. I've been on ferries similar to this. I've also been on some big ferries, like the ferry to Newfoundland. I have to stay in my truck. So I can't like walk around, but you can sort of see in my mirror here, if you can sort of see the captain's tower is up there, see? I was just up there hanging out with him for a bit uh, before we got going here. Cool guy. He had to see my paperwork and stuff so he knew what was on his ship. Uh, he's from Fisher River. He's up here on a two week, uh, he calls it a uh, vacation, a cruise, <laughs> all expenses paid cruise. He comes up here from there for two weeks and uh, does the, the ferry back and forth here, right? And uh, beside me there, we got that front end loader and we got a van right beside me here and crammed way behind me, and you can't see it, right behind my trailer is another pickup truck. So once we get to York uh, factory, I have an hour and a half. They're supposed to meet me there. I have an hour and a half to get this truck unloaded and get back to the ferry before the ferry leaves. Unless they convince him to wait for me. I don't know what's gonna happen. I just hope I don't get stuck out here overnight. It's also snowing and uh, the captain here was saying that uh, his forecast said 17 inches in some places is expected. 40 in isolated areas. Now, when I checked the forecast, I'll check it again right now, it said only one and a half inches. What's the forecast where I am? 
Yeah, didn't even tell me. Okay, I'm gonna say York Factory. Google, you're supposed to know where I am. What's the forecast in York Factory, Manitoba? Here's the forecast for York Factory. There is currently a wind warning in effect. Really? Let's investigate. Wind warning. Oh dear. Strong winds with gusts up to 90 kilometers an hour are expected to begin this afternoon. <laughs> Lovely. A Colorado low moving through Manitoba is causing strong winds to develop along the coast of the Hudson's Bay. Thanks, Colorado. Uh, conditions are expected to improve later this evening. Loose objects may be tossed by the wind and cause injury or damage. Please continue to monitor alerts and forecast issues issued by Environment Canada. That was 52 minutes ago. Really? Really? It's one degree Celsius here right now. It's about 33 Fahrenheit. 95% precipitation. Snow, chance of snow is 100% throughout the day. I want to know how much snow am I expecting? Uh... Okay, okay, okay. Volumes of 23.6 millimeters of water. Snowfall 76.2 to 127 millimeters. Which is like what, 1.27 centimeters, right? That's not even an inch. I don't know which forecast the captain's looking at, but uh, I like mine better. His sounded scary. So hopefully uh, everything works out according to plan and we can get unloaded and back on the boat and get, get home tonight yet, I hope. Stop moving. <laughs> there was a crew member that walked around my truck here looking in all directions. I hope we're not lost. Because I don't know where we are. Can't see land in any direction. Oh, wait, wait, nope, there's something over there. I think I see some trees there. I don't know if it's just a mirage. I'm a new sailor. I think we're turning, aren't we? Oh, oh, there come the engines. Oh, there's a tiny little island over there. It's a big lake that we're on. It's a big, big lake. I wonder if we're getting close. Because I see some land over here. I wonder if that's where we got to... Can't see anything. I'm sure they have GPS and compasses and all kinds of navigational equipment in there. I'm just a rookie sailor. I don't know these things. If it was me up there, I'd be lost. I have no idea. I'd be going in circles in the middle of the lake. We drove right off the ferry and we're now in York Factory First Nation. There's quite a few homes here. Well, that's interesting. We got an Anglican church off to the right here. Not too sure where we're going. I'm following that pickup in front of me.
so surprised at these remote communities. You've really got to love nature and love the, the wild lifestyle to live up here. Because they do have the option, you can come live anywhere else you want to, but they choose to live here. I've never seen a trailer get unloaded so fast. I was in there helping them. They had like four, five, six guys in here. I don't even know. I couldn't tell. They're moving so fast. Got me unloaded in like five minutes. Now around here. Let's get back to the Am I good? north I've ever been in my life in Manitoba. I have been further north. Just enough room. <laughs> See you guys have a good one.
I go on now or all these people seem to be waiting so I'm gonna wait here with them I don't want to get stuck on this hill I won't be able to back up from here out of the way. Does that mean they want me to go on to the boat now? They're turning around. I'm confused. I'm assuming that they're going to guide me on when they're going to leave. I'm just going to sit here like a confused little southern boy. It's my first time up north. I don't know what I'm doing. They know I'm going to be going on to the boat. Hello. Not when I was on it, no. How is that? Okay. Maybe on the way there. I don't know. In Split Lake to here, it was fine. At least uh, maybe they just didn't tell me. <laughs> okay. He's gonna go find out what's going on. Hi. Hi. Okay, so there's somebody out on the boat over there now. Is he gonna wave me in? I'm so confused. I have no idea what's going on. Just don't leave without me, okay? Please, I want to go home. Actually, I don't want to go home. I want to. I want to go pick up another load. I want to make some money. I gotta go all the way back to Winnipeg for it, though. When you come up this far north to these remote communities, it's usually uh, a dead head back. But uh, usually it, it works out. It's designed to be that way. So The guy there was saying maybe there's a problem with the ferry? I hope not. If there's a problem with the ferry, I'm stuck hanging out here. Which is okay, everyone here seems to be pretty nice. But if these wheels ain't turning, I ain't turning. Well, looks like it'll make it on. Looks like it, yeah. Are they just waiting to load, or am I supposed to go down there now? They'll, they'll call you. They'll call me? Okay. Yeah. All right, I'm just coming. I was just coming to check up on you. Okay. okay. Thank you. It was great. They work so fast. Yeah, that was my, uh, my contact here. I think she works with the council and the chief. And uh, she just wanted to make sure I was getting on the ferry. Yep, as far as I know, it looks like I'm getting on the ferry. I'm just sitting here like a like a clueless little duck. Looking around, what am I supposed to do now? Excuse me. Excuse me. That's right there. <laughs> like I was saying in yesterday's video, I'm usually pretty confident everywhere I go. I've been everywhere five times, right? Or, doesn't matter where I go, I've been everywhere, done everything. Nothing really surprises me much anymore, but there's still always some surprises. You're still always learning things. You're always still experiencing new things all the time as a truck driver. This is one of those days. This is a complete new experience for me. So that's why I'm sitting here like... I don't know what I'm doing. But after I get this done, so next time I come to York Factory, if they ever order another trailer and it ever happens to be me, driving up here, I'll know what to do. I'll know how to get on the ferry, I'll know where the ferry is, where to board, how the loading procedure is, everything. Like, once you do it once, you sort of get things down pat, right? So, ah, before you know it, we'll be on the water here, back on the mainland, and then trucking on back to southern Manitoba. I'm thinking there'll probably be a new load for me tomorrow down there somewhere. I'm I don't know if I'll make it all the way back tonight because it'll be pretty late. It's a ten and a half hour drive from here if the roads are good and the weather seems like it might take a little longer than uh, longer to get back than it did to get up. Lightning fast these guys are. Unloaded me and I'm here waiting for the ferry. Blue 
Blue's first snowfall with me as its owner. I hope it likes me as much as it liked the last driver. I don't know what the whole process is, but uh, we'll figure it out. Still very impressed with how fast those guys got me unloaded. I thought I was going to miss the ferry, like at first, because the ferry was a little late getting here, so I thought I was going to leave a little earlier than we expected, but no, no, we still made it. Got me unloaded in time, and now we'll be back to, I don't want to say the mainland, because this is still the mainland, we just need to cross the lake. And that's what I was saying, why I'm surprised they don't have a road here, because I'm not on an island. You could drive around the lake if there was a road. They, there's just no road. In wintertime, there's a road. It comes in from the backside of, of the reserve, I think. And, uh, but it's a winter road. So it just goes through the bush. It's not paved or gravel or anything. It just gets packed with snow. Well, <clears throat> we're spending the night here. The ferry's not going. I don't know why. Maybe the weather is too bad. But, uh, ferry leaves at 8 a.m. tomorrow. It's 1.30 p.m. now, so I have, uh, quite a bit of time here. And I got no cell service where I am here right now either, so I can't even, like, let the wife know that I'm here and okay. So, I'm gonna have to back up the hill here a little bit and see if, uh, I can find cell service somewhere higher up on higher ground. I also have to let work know that I'm gonna be here. Okay. <clears throat> I'm just gonna go make sure there's no one behind me. I'm gonna have to back up the hill. I wonder why he's not going. I mean, the water looks fine. Look at this. I mean, yeah, it's snowing a little bit, right? But it's not too, too bad. That's a big bummer. That's a lost day of work for me. Here we wait, first in line, but it's still snowing quite a bit. I don't know if they're even going to go tomorrow morning. If I don't go tomorrow morning, I got to sit and wait here until the following morning, which would be Wednesday. And then I got to drive all the way back on Wednesday which means this whole week is pretty much shot. Because I'd have Thursday and Friday to get some loads done. I could run into Saturday if I had to, but can't deliver anywhere Saturday, it's a weekend. So I'll be able to do one, one more load this week. Really, really messed my whole week up here. But, you know, that's trucking. There's disappointments. That's in any line of work, not just trucking. Things don't go as planned. Didn't work out. The good news is that uh, I have a warm truck here. I got lots of fuel because I fueled up in Thompson. So I got lots of fuel. Uh, I got lots of food, coffee. Got my computer here. Got my phone. The bad news is I have no cell service. Zero. I have to walk all the way up the hill and uh, to get cell signal. And if I want to get data, I got to walk a kilometer all the way around down to where I unloaded and there's, there's a little motel there and I can grab their Wi-Fi. They let me under their Wi-Fi there. And uh, so I went all the way up there and I called Britt, called and let my family know that, hey, I'm going to be sitting here without cell signal tonight. You won't be able to reach me uh, just so they know where I'm at and what's going on. And uh, called work, let them know what was going on. Oh, oh what can we do though? snowstorm it's supposed to snow all day tomorrow too i really hope the ferry goes in the morning it's supposed to leave at 8 a.m but it's supposed to be snowing all day so uh tune in tomorrow to see if we get out of here it'll be so nice to get out of here tomorrow i need to get out of here tomorrow i need to be able to make something of my week yet my wheels ain't turning i ain't earning disappointed but we'll have a good sleep here and we'll uh start fresh with a brand new day tomorrow thanks for tuning in everybody sometimes things don't go the way you want them to nothing we can do about it tomorrow will be a better day